Hi everyone, in this video we'll study the concept of loop invariance and how we apply it to prove the correctness of algorithms. And this video will look at merge sort and prove the correctness of merge sort using loop invariance. Now, if you looked at the earlier video in this playlist where we proved the correctness of insertion sort using loop invariance, you will see that there are commonalities between the two videos. But just to keep the two videos independent, I'm going to describe loop invariance again in this video. Now, loop invariance of a computer program loop is a property that remains true before and after each iteration of the loop. Now, that is what loop invariance is. It is something that remains true before and after each iteration of the loop. And how is this useful? It is useful to prove the correctness of algorithms. Now, we'll see how we apply loop invariance to prove the correctness of merge sort. But before that, we have to understand what are the properties or characteristics of loop invariance. Now, loop invariance has three main properties. First, initialization. It is true prior to the initialization of the first iteration. So even before the loop begins, the loop invariant, whatever we define for a particular problem, is true. Now, the second important property is maintenance, which is if the loop invariant is true before an iteration of the loop, it remains true before the next iteration of the loop. So here there is an assumption. So we assume that it is true before an iteration of a loop, and then we will use that to prove that it is true at the next before the next iteration of the loop. That's what the maintenance property is. That is, if it's true before an iteration of the loop, it remains true before the next iteration of the loop. Now, the third characteristic or property is termination which is when the loop finishes, the loop invariant provides a useful property that helps us demonstrate that the algorithm is correct. So we want to prove that our algorithm is correct and the way we define a loop invariant helps us in the term and the termination state to prove that the algorithm is correct. So how do we define a loop invariant? So defining a loop invariant is actually an art and it depends on the problem that you are going to study and it varies from one problem to another. So here, I'm just going to, to show how we use loop invariance to prove the correctness of merge sort. I'm not going to go through the merge sort algorithm. If you want to understand the merge sort algorithm, I just described it in the previous video in this playlist. So I encourage you to go and take a look at that. So the merge sort, just to quickly recollect what it is, it, it's a recursive algorithm which is, uses divide and conquer. So what you do is you divide the array into two halves, which is done by calling merge sort, and then you combine it in the merge step. So the merge step is the main, main algorithm or the main core part of merge sort. So when we try to prove loop invariance or correctness of merge sort, we're going to focus on merge because if we can prove that merge is correct. Merge, proving merge sort is correct is pretty easy, simply because if you look up here, merge sort, the main thing that we have in merge sort is basically this merge function. So in merge, once again, I'm not going to describe this. This is the entire merge function. So what you do is you're going to have n1 and n2, and then we are going to create our left and right, two new arrays. And then we basically compare the, the, the top elements of left and right, and then put them in the, in the new array to just sort them, okay? That is what merge sort does. So once again, I'm not gonna go through this. Please look at the previous video in this playlist to understand merge sort. So now to prove correctness, what we are going to do is we are going to first describe loop invariant. And as I just mentioned uh, in this video, to prove the correctness of the algorithm, we are going to focus on proving that merge is correct because merge sort's most important part is actually the merge function. So what is the loop invariant that we are going to, to define for this? Now, at the start of each iteration of the, of the lines, 12 to 17, and we'll look at what those lines are. The subarray a p to k minus one contains the k minus p smallest elements of l and r in sorted order. So there's a left array, there's a right array, 
left array is L, the right array is R, and the, the main array A contains the k minus p smallest elements, but in sorted order. So the subarray that we are going to look at for a particular iteration of the for loop, starting from a p to k minus one, contains the k minus p smallest elements in sorted order. Additionally, li and rj are the smallest elements of the array that have not been copied into a. So which lines are we talking about here? We are talking about these lines. So this is the for loop here. So what we are saying is that in this for loop, starting from lines 12 to 17, what we are saying is the subarray, I'm just going to change the color here. The subarray a p to k minus 1 contains the k minus p smallest elements of the left and the right but in sorted order. And the first elements of left and right also contain the smallest elements of the array that have not been copied back into a. That's the loop invariant here. Okay, so now let's try to, to prove that this loop invariant helps us establish the correctness of the algorithm. So to do that, let's look at initialization. Now, prior to the first iteration, okay, k is equal to p. k is equal to p. And we'll look at the pseudocode in a moment. But let just, just trust me that k is going to be equal to p. So the subarray a p to k minus 1. We're looking at that subarray. Okay, that is what we did that we have defined here in the loop invariant is empty because k is, is equal to p so it's empty and contains k minus p equal to zero elements so it does not contain any element so of course it's going to be in sorted order and i and j are both equal they're equal to one so li and rj contain the smallest elements of their arrays that have not been copied back. So li and rj contain smallest elements not copied back. Not copied back. Back into A. Okay. So this is and initialization it holds true so now let's look at why k is equal to p and i is equal to j equal to one so so i and j have both been initialized to one here so that part um, holds true so we are good there and at the beginning k is equal to p so the in uh, at initialization k equals p i equals one j equals one okay so the, the loop invariant holds true at initialization. Now we have to study the maintenance property. So for maintenance, let's study the case. Let's consider Li is less than Rj. I'm going to consider Li less than or equal to so going back to the pseudocode, essentially, there are two conditions here inside the for loop. Either li is greater than rj or the else condition. Okay, So we're just going to consider li less than or equal to rj. That's the condition. The other thing will also hold true. Okay, So you can prove the same thing for when li is actually greater than rj. So when li is less than or equal to rj, li, it's the smallest element. It's the smallest element not copied into a. Because that's what the loop invariant says. So we're going to assume this holds true. Okay, so li contains the smallest element not copied into a, and a, p to k minus 1 contains 
k minus p smallest elements okay so these two we are going to assume for the maintenance property and then we are going to do to prove that these conditions hold true again at the beginning of the next loop on the beginning of the next iteration of the loop so to understand how this will work let's look at the algorithm again so let's look at line 14 here so in line 14 you're going to copy li into ak this is what is happening in line 14 here so when you do that what is going to happen is after line 14 a p to k will contain k minus p plus one smallest elements and then you're going to increment i and after the entire iteration completes in line 12 we'll go back and iterate and increment k so in line 15 i will get incremented and line 12 when you go back to the iter next iteration of the for loop k will get in incremented and that will help us re-establish the loop invariant for the next iteration so so when line 14 when you're assigning so in line 14 what you do is you're assigning li to ak so in line 14 that's what is happening li ak equal to li that's what is happening this assignment happens therefore for a p to k contains k minus p plus one elements smallest elements okay that's what happens now after line 15 after line 15 i is incremented and in the beginning of the next iteration so when the for loop gets incremented k will increment so k is incremented in the for loop okay so that's what happens in the beginning of the for loop the k gets incremented this basically will help us re-establish the loop invariant this helps re-establish the loop invariant that is what happens here so because both i and k get incremented the loop invariance which is a p to k minus one smallest elements uh, contains k minus p smallest elements that will get re-established okay so this is how we prove maintenance now the last and final piece of this puzzle is termination okay so termination what happens we'll look at what happens to k so let's just go back to the pseudocode here so it's termination k is going to be r plus one okay that is what is going to happen termination and let's see what how that helps us so k equal to r plus one so by definition of loop invariant definition of loop invariant we have a the array a starting from p to k minus one which is a p to r because k is r plus one contains k minus p equal to r minus p plus one smallest elements that is all the elements in the array which is all the elements in this array p to r all the elements small element in sorted order okay that is essentially what we have okay that is what we sorted or set or set out to prove that a p plus p a p to r all those elements will be sorted at the iter at the for, after the for loop finishes executing and that is what we have 
proved here. Okay, so here the loop invariant gave us this unique property that we exploited at termination. That is when k became equal to r plus one. That is just the definition of loop invariant. That is all the elements in A p to A k minus one, which is in this case A p to r. Basically, all those elements are in sorted order. So, with this. In this video, we studied how to prove the correctness of merge sort using the concept of loop invariance. I hope you found this uh, video useful. Thank you for watching.